hands. It's another sacrament. All right, guys? Here's a pop quiz for you. What is the definition of a sacrament? It's Not a ginger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. No. That, oh, that's an example. Oh, okay. That's an example of one, not a definition. Oh, of definition. Of, of sacrament? It's covenant. No. Nope. The covenant. Nope. A lot of people say it's a holy act. Listen, it's a physical act with a spiritual effect. It's the supernatural and the natural coming together. That's why we don't treat communion as symbolic. It's not just some physical act. It is a sacrament. You are taking and eating uh, a cracker and juice, right, that represents the body of Christ. And if you do that in an unworthy manner, judgment can come on you. That's why Paul said some of you are sick and some of you have even died. Be careful how you take communion. That's an example of a sacrament. It's why we don't consummate a marriage before marriage, right? <laughs> because consummation is a physical act with a spiritual effect. What else? What's another example of a sacrament? Water baptism. The Lord doesn't want you to just do something and get all wet in front of everybody else for the sake of getting wet, right? Mm -hmm. There is a physical act that you are walking into by faith and a spiritual effect is taking place in those waters. Surgery is being, spiritual surgery is being performed on you and you're rising up as a new person. The enemy is being cut off from you. It's a physical act with a spiritual effect, right? Okay, same with laying on of hands. Laying on of hands is a physical act with a spiritual effect. But what's used in this case, your hands. We talked about the history, the hands of God. We talked last week about when a sacrifice was made for sin. Remember when he got the little animal out and I laid hands? Oh, yeah. And through a person's hands in the Old Testament, they laid the hands on the animal's head and confessed their what? Sins. Sins. They, they said, I am wrong in this. And God said that the, the sins of the man or the woman was placed upon the innocent animal's head and was imputed to him. The sins were imputed to the animal. Now that animal was once innocent, has now become what? Guilty. In your place, and therefore, the wages of sin is yeah. death. The animal must die. Look, the blood is shed of the animal. He's paid your uh, penalty, right? And the blood has covered. So now God can look at you. That's Old Testament. Did Jesus' blood cover your sins? Yes. No. Okay, no way. Jesus' blood was not to be compared to ever as an animal's blood. Oh, Jesus' blood was so powerful, it didn't just cover up your sin. Let me just use this real quick. If this represented your sin, this green jar in the Old Testament, the animal shed, it covered so God didn't have to see your sin. Okay, Jesus came along, and what happened? Took away. Took away. Who takes it away? You can't even see it. It's removed. Thank you, Jesus. When I repent, my sins are removed from the Lord. As far as the east is from the west, they're thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. I never have to go to the throne and say, Oh my gosh, I remember when I was a senior in high school and I said that, Lord, I am so sorry for that. I just, oh, that memory plays me. You know what the Lord says? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Wait, what do you, what do you, what are you talking about? He's thrown that seat, that, that sin. Yeah, Isn't that yeah. beautiful? Isn't that incredible? He has a, a special thing that we don't have. He has a forgettery in his brain. And he can forget. So he can control his memory. And the enemy might remind us of that. Yeah, he wants to remind us. of it. And there's a right? good side, though, to that. There's a silver lining in that. Because what I so stupidly did as a senior, I would still do today. But except the power of the Holy Spirit has caused me to hate it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if on Judgment Day, then that He doesn't bring any of that back up. That's right. That's just what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why do we need daily repentance? Yeah. That's why I'm saying you want to keep a short account with yeah. the Lord. You want to be clean every single day. Mm -hmm. You know. So He doesn't remind us of. I mean. The judgment no. isn't much no. on Judgment Day. No, though, we're it's in... rewards for believers. Okay, unless you're gonna not be cleaned up. So, how yeah. specific do you have to be when you repent? 
does it have to be like how yeah. sinful is sin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how sinful do you how sin how when is sin sin? Well, you know what? I would just soon confess it all. I am wrong. I know I'm wrong. I'm not counting on me. Are you kidding? I just went to cook. Oh, Jesus, please forgive me. I was wrong. I have sinned. That's pretty nice. Isn't that? Isn't that great? Yes, that's the beauty. We can pray for the sins that we're unaware of, too, and that they're revealed so that we can Yes! Wonderful! Please, Lord, Holy Spirit, yeah. what, 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 this area, show me. The areas in my yeah. life I want to be holy, without which I, I can't see the Lord. Mm -hmm. Listen, when I face the Lord, I want to hear, oh, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yes. Uh, I got to work. What yeah. revelation is there going on? Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that to my attention. Yeah. Yes, yeah. amen. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Jesus, for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Okay, so we see that in the history, the hands of God, in the hands of men, the priests or the people, okay, the hands of God. The hands of Jesus, we saw, let's read it together. He was a carpenter. Mm -hmm. He probably had very strong hands. He laid hands on children to bless them. Hey, think about this. Jesus was the oldest boy in his household. There was a lot of responsibility when you were the oldest son in the household, and he had many little brothers and little sisters, right? Mm -hmm. I can imagine they were wrestling together with the boys and tickling his sisters, hugging and all sorts of things was going on with the hands in that house, okay? Um, he laid, uh, when he was in his ministry, he laid hand, his hands on sick and he healed them. You know, in those days, the leprosy, you know, you had to go around in the community, unclean, unclean, that's what you had to say. That was the culture. You don't cross that barrier. And what did Jesus say? He just blew right through it and went and he touched them. He went right through. And isn't that the culture we're living in today? Six feet apart. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Stay apart. Stay Where's, apart. Stay apart. It's just it's all the demonic. demonic. No, we're going to mm. blow right through that. Yeah. Right? Mm. Okay. Um, he took a few loaves and fish in his hand. What did he do? He divided it with his hands. I mean, what happened? It multiplied in his hands. Um, he picked up the cross with his hands. Oh, mm. Lord. Thank you for that. He allowed his hands to be taken. After all he did with his hands was so much good. He surrendered his hands over the man so that they could put nails in it and mutilate his body. And then he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny that he said, into your hands, Father? Hands are really important, mm -hmm. right? All right, the hands of man, okay? Uh, <clears throat> let me see. All right. As we read in the New Testament, it says of those who were filled with Holy Spirit power that they believed that their hands were the hands of Jesus, therefore the hands of God, all right? And so that's how our hands get linked up with God, right? It's by receiving Holy Spirit, and now our hands become very, very important okay the apostles in the early church did many miracles through the laying out of hands they impart baptism and holy spirit to fellow believers they set people into leadership through the laying on of hands they worshiped with their hands it was beautiful um let's see what uh let's go to that page two the responsibility as believers now okay we are given authority um uh, with our hands these hands as believers, now are they going to do common things today? Are they going to be used while you take a shower to wash your body? Yeah, yeah, that's common. That's not profane, okay? Any of your hygiene performances are not a profanity, okay? Murder is, and other things would be, but that's common. And our hands are going to be used to, to make a meal today. Those are wonderful common things. But man, these hands as believers are also separated out to be used with the hands of Jesus in them, to have authority with them. But this only by the direction of the Lord. Be very careful with your hands. What does Timothy, Timothy say there? Look at that. It says, Paul says to Timothy, Do not lay hands on anyone hastily. Don't be quick to do that. Mm. Oh my gosh, yeah, let's just lay hands on this person. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's just lay hands on this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Be careful. What if you're laying hands on somebody who's in sin? Ooh. Right? you got to come in and pray for my person. She, uh, my, my friend, you know, she's really, really sick. Just lay hands on her. Please. Whoa. we got to get some things right here. These are the hands of God and the hands of man. So what does it say? Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, 
nor you share in other people's sins or keep yourself pure. What if you're sitting there and you know all of this stuff and a friend comes up, they just feel like they need to lay hands and they, they just want to impart a word to you. Do you know them? No. What if they're in sin? You going to let them lay hands on you? Are you in relationship with them? Yeah. Right. Guys, be very careful. This is emphasis on the local body of Christ and why we need to be in relationship mm -hmm. and studying the word together. Yes. So I see that being done a lot in the church. Too much. Too much? Okay. Wait, let me qualify that. There's a way to do it. There isn't a limit on laying out of hands. There's a way in which we lay on of hands. And that's it. Not hastily. Not if you're in sin or the other person's in sin and only by the direction of God. So it's not about the number of times that you're seeing it done. It's whether it's being done properly with these principles in mind. Do you know what I'm saying? So I don't want you to get hooked up on a number. I want you to get hooked up on the principle of doing it correctly. But I mean, like when someone's being prayed on at church and say the pastor says, everybody put your hands on them. Yeah. Is that? I'm, I'm, you know what? What does that say to you? You read it. It says, don't be hasty to lay hands on. What if there are people in there that are unbelievers now laying hands on you? You see what I'm saying? Mm. you got to be careful. Yes. What about, like, you have family members, even though you know they're not, their life isn't together, they're not serving the Lord or whatever, to, to want to pray a blessing over their, them. Is that? And they're not believers? Yes. What's the greatest blessing you could give them? Jesus. There you go. Okay. Don't get caught up in blessings of financial and health and this, that, and the other. The greatest blessing that we as people can give. The word became flesh and dwelt with man in spirit and with grace and truth. We do the works of Jesus. We speak truth into people. So what do you do in that situation? Yeah. Let's just say. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, like going, uh, I'm sorry. I yeah. Can't How do we do this? No, you're gonna, okay, so this is why you need baptism and Holy Spirit. Because look what it says. Um. Because you need to be uh, 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 directed by God on this. You're going to have Holy Spirit direction on this, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't be so quick to just do whatever that person wants. What is the Holy Spirit telling you to pray for that person? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Does that person know the Lord? Let's talk about that. Does that person not know the Lord and really want a healing? Yeah, I, I really do want to be healed. Well, I'm going to pray to my God for you. But if you are raised up into healing... What are you going to do about it? Are you willing then to look at some things differently? We can pray for signs and miracles and wonders. They follow us. We don't follow signs and wonders. They follow us. We can, we can pray that somebody is healed and raised up. That's the perfect situation to be able to say, I prayed for you. I, and his name is Jesus and he healed you. I know. I can't believe it. I'm so thankful. What are you going to do about that? Mm -hmm. Let's talk now. You received a miracle. Who did that miracle come from? A rock that you carry in your purse? That little crystal healing bracelet? Or you see what I'm saying? Use the Holy Spirit. Don't say, I'm giving you a guidance of this is why we need to be in relationship with Holy Spirit every single day. That's why Jesus was praying so much. He saw what his father wanted him to do each and every day. You're going to have to pray, Lord, I'm your hands and feet and your mouth right now in Ventura and where I go. I need to know what you want me to do and give me that direction when it comes about. I'm just trying to get into you. Be careful. Be careful. With, look at your hands, guys. Look at them. Be careful with them. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to make this make sense, but the disciples were much more sent out two by two. Like, <coughs> there's, account, and then, like there's an accountability and a responsibility Amen. to all of this, yes. right? Yes. So, to go back to um, the, uh, the apostles when it said, did many miracles through the laying on of hands, and then the third mm -hmm. one down says, set people in leadership through that. So there's obviously like a teaching component that goes along with this because they're pouring into these guys, right? right? So they did. They how does that hands. happen and you see now? It. And 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 then don't lay hands on anyone hastily, you know, nor share in other people's sins. Like, how do we refine that? Like th back Again. back then, like 
how did the apostles do like well, how did the you leading learn? of the holy spirit and they were very much involved with their local church they knew the sheep that were there they saw the sheep that the holy spirit had separated on some of them to raise them up into leadership positions they worked with them they knew them they laid hands on them they set them into position we see that in certain churches where they where the elders come and they lay hands on people they set them into a position what I'm saying is, is don't be sloppy. Just like grace has been treated so sloppy by the church in the last 30 years. Oh, don't worry about it. Grace of God, come to that. It's the blood. It, look what we've just done to Jesus. You know, the same way we want to have a reverence for holiness, a regard, and a weightiness with sin, we also want to be very careful with our hands. Again, you're kind of in a different way asking me the same question she did. How many times? I see it a lot. How do you do it? Yeah. I'm teaching you the mature principle right now that you've got to be careful with your hands. You've got to be careful with your own life. Don't lay hands on somebody as a believer if you know there's sin in your life. You need to confess that before you lay hands on somebody. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's a responsibility is all I'm saying with hands. Yes. Um, I'm just I'm just slightly confused because I feel like, um, you know, Jesus like would go up to a leper, no problem. I think, I mean, gra granted that's Jesus. Um, but then I think about, you know, people, like a, a person specifically that are praying for uh, on the street that I didn't know, that I know was in sin but was suffering. Well, yes, and I'm saying the Holy Spirit might lead you to lay hands on that person, mm -hmm. right? That, that if, if the Holy Spirit has, has, has called you to do that, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is be careful. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to Not the Holy will. Spirit. You guys are trying to get me to compartmentalize and no, give you a rule. You're all looking for a and formula. Rule, well, yeah. sort of. No, but no, how? that's not how God works. You can't put God in a box. No. What I am saying is there is maturity and there is a reverence. I taught you and I and we've 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 stirred up the the reverence for God today. We've stirred up a, a hatred and um, a regard for sin and the danger of it in our life. I'm doing the same thing with our hands. Be careful with them. You're causing this. Uh, here's how I take it: is your this class and this information that we're going over is causing us to really understand our responsibility as a believer. Right. Mm -hmm. Whether mm -hmm. she's praying yeah. and laying yeah. hands That's on someone right. because she believes. Right. I've done that before, and I right. never really thought about the right. that, that that responsibility. It's right. the same thing with yeah. being afraid of sinning. Uh -huh. It's the same thing. It's to have a different look. Like exactly. Well, that's like this very is careful. consequence. Yeah. Oh, and we may yeah. not do it because we're afraid to do it wrong. Right. So I. I guess this no, is a safe I'm not place. trying to in any way say don't do it now because of what I'm telling you. What I'm saying is let's grow up in the Lord and yes. let's realize that we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and be directed by the Holy Spirit in that. Are, are you going to make mistakes? Yeah. 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 Have yeah. I? Yep. Have I gone to the throne and, and does God, has got, it says that he's had to wink in the past at some of the things that we've done. God has had to actually wink at some of the things I've taught because I thought I was teaching right, but I realized now I wasn't and I, I had to go back. I, we've got, I'm, all I'm saying is let's regard these safely. Right. And I, I think, too, when you know, like, for example, one of the girls where live now, she came over to check on us and she was in a lot of pain, and I was like, what's going on? So she told me, and, I, and then she's like, well, you know, just keep me in prayer. Pray for it. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, would you believe? Are you a believer? Oh, yes. So I said, would you like me to pray for you? And mm -hmm. she said, yes. So we prayed for her, and she came back the next day. She said, I want you to know, God healed me. Yep. God healed me. Thank you, Lord. But, but the thing is, when they come, how I see it, when they come to me for prayer, they're looking at someone in faith to to combine with them to say, pray. I'm I I believe and I'm expecting something because I believe there. And yet, again, I'm not so quick to pray and want to pray for somebody either, you know. Only because I know, like you said, sometimes you don't know where they're at. But when they come to you, when they come to you, there's a need. They've spoken it out. If, and they know you're a believer, I think we have that responsibility to not so much lay hands on them, but 
and pray. Let's go to James. Let's, I want to build on this. Let's go to James with what she's saying. <clears throat> How could you ever go wrong with asking, if you just pray for somebody, just to ask Jesus to help them? Right. How could that ever be wrong? That's a good question. Well, what is God? We, we, our prayers are answered if we pray according to the will of God. What is God's ultimate desire that we know, know him that we know him so their greatest sin or excuse me their greatest sickness is called sin that's the greatest sickness of every of every man okay James chapter 5. James 5. All right, and let's go to, um, mm, where is it? 14, 14 or 15. Uh, let's start at 13, okay? And, and this is what James says, are any of you suffering hardships? Now, okay, first of all, who are they talking to here? Believers. Thank you. So this is directed to believers. This yeah. is a letter written to believers, not unbelievers. So let's first qualify that and get it categorized. I do it. 14, 13. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? <clears throat> you should sing praises. Mm -hmm. Are any of you sick? Now, sick means here <clears throat> you're laid out and you're not able to carry on your typical work. Not the sniffles. It's when you're incapacitated to be able to do your normal amount of work. Okay? Mm -hmm. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come mm -hmm. and pray mm -hmm. over you, anointing you with oil that takes your hands in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. You then go on, confess your sins to each other, and pray for each other so that you may be healed. In other words, the person that you've gone to to ask for laying out of hands and anointing with oil when you're sick, you need to make sure that you, is there any sin in your life? You're going to go pray for somebody that you know and that you're in relationship with that is a believer. You should say, is there any sin that you that is unconfessed, brother, sister, in your life? So before let's, you pray for him, you ask him that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's yeah, So what okay. the Word of God says, let's, let's, let's first get, sin is always the most important thing with God. Let's get that out of the way first, okay? Let's get the sin dealt with. Are there any sins that you, the person who's praying for, has against them? against God, you know, whatever, then let's get that done. Let's, let's first, before we present our needs to God, let's what? Let's, let's get a clear channel. The sin blocks. Sin, you can't get miracles when there's blockage. Okay? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you because you're on a roll, but I'm just, um, <laughs> the, somebody said, well, that gives you the opportunity to say a salvation prayer. And I'm like, well, where's the salvation? Okay, prayer? now, all right, so I was just going to go to that. So okay. that's a good question. Now, who was this written to in James? Believers, Believers. correct? Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about it. We know the theory behind it, right? Now, can God give an unbeliever a miracle? Yes. Absolutely, because that's one reason we pray for miracles. We don't pray for miracle signs and wonders as believers for ourselves because we are a people called to live by faith. The kingdom of God operates by faith, not by sight. So we do pray for miracles for unbelievers so that what? So that they might come but what a great opportunity if somebody asks you a believer to pray for them and to lay hands boy that just i i have all sorts of questions coming up in me why do you think that i have something mm -hmm. that could help you did you see all the open doors that you could start saying and why do you think you should why should i lay my hands on you what what is it do you just want to be raised up from the bed so that you can continue on in sin? It's an awesome moment for evangelizing the gospel of God. It's, it's wonderful. So that's why I'm saying I'm not going to give you a formula. Mm -hmm. But I want you to understand the principle behind your hands. The hands of God and the hands of man. He is holy. Mm -hmm. 
He's a holy God, and he wants a holy people. And if we want the hands of God acting upon our hands, then we need to be in partnership and understand the holiness and the sacredness of this thing. Did Jesus touch the sinners? Of course he did. He was led by Holy Spirit. He was led by God. That's why it's so important to be in prayer. Do you, do you kind of understand? That is so helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Where I'm going? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can go down. Let's talk about the anointing of oil. Oil in the Old Testament was understood as grease, often perfumed. It was often olive oil. And it was used by God to touch us with his presence. Again, a physical act with a spiritual effect. Mm -hmm. Therefore, oil represents faith. The, uh, by faith, the Holy Spirit, the person who has the power. It can be used to anoint something or someone for consecration or to set them apart for office or for function. We can read, and I've given you scripture there as a memorial, when oil was poured over a stone. Right? You can. There's nothing wrong with taking a little oil and anointing the, the door frame of your home and asking that the Holy Spirit come and live in your home. That's a yeah. wonderful thing to do. You can do that. I've right? done that. Like my mom did that years ago. I'm like, oh, you could do that. And then when I had that weird experience of that evil spirit on top of me at my house, my daughter and I were like, okay, grab the olive oil, grab the Bible, <laughs> that's right. And we're going to do it. And as you yeah. know, and I would absolutely suggest that when you move into a new home, even if it's a brand new home yeah. that you have built, yeah. That no one has ever lived in. You got workers that have been in that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to separate that house out. You want to sanctify mm -hmm. it, right? Okay. Um, as um, a future um, office bearer, it could be um, it could be a sign of mourning, a, uh, um, a sign of rejoicing. In the Old Testament, their earlobe, their thumb, and their big toe was anointed. Why? Mm -hmm. Isn't that That's weird? Cool. Mm -hmm. So that they might hear the Lord. That they may do God's will and walk where he leads us. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Isn't that beautiful? So the next time, you know, you get your cutting, you just say, okay, I'm going to stop right here and annoy my big toe. <laughs> you need a petty, by the way, on Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, 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 put that on my calendar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, everybody's toes, right? Yeah, Wendy's yeah, got us covered. Yeah, that's right. Okay, um, anoint has the idea of contact to oil someone or something, thus, touch is involved. Touch is so important. Listen, look at the world today. The enemy is always going to be doing the very opposite of what. The body of Christ is. We are living stones. God has brought us in, and what is he doing? We're a new stone that is made here, part of the body of Christ. Now we're getting hewn and shaped so that we can be next to each other. Stand up. This is how he sees us all lined up together, right? And, 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 and we're all fitting together. There's touch involved. Of course, the enemy, he's doing the very opposite thing right now. So you can, you can see that. You can just laugh. you got to have spiritual eyes to yep. see what's happening. Say, oh, you know, no, not going to do that. Okay. Um, Jesus was anointed with Holy Spirit in preparation of carrying out his Father's will. Look, up, look these scriptures up, you know, this week. Um, 2 Corinthians says, Now it is God who establishes and confirms us in joint fellowship with you in Christ and who was uh, um, has anointed us, empowering us with gifts of the Spirit and, and character and divine character of the Spirit. Okay? We have in Hebrews the oil of joy. Um, we're directed to anoint and pray for other believers who are sick. We already went over that. Okay? So it is a it is a heavy responsibility. It's a joy. I just want you to know how to use it correctly and properly and be led by the Holy Spirit and be careful. But it was originally directed to the church. I don't think that I would anoint an unbeliever with oil. It's the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't do that. I might lay hands on him and pray for him, right? I might do that. But I'm not going to anoint a non-believer with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit can't be received by a non-believer. But boy, I'm going to tell you something. You can thank the Lord if an unbeliever is in your life and is looking to you for answers. Mm -hmm. Then you thank him. Don't be quick to just want to, whoa, I want him up and around and happy. Because if it's quick, what's he going to typically do? Now, that doesn't mean that God can't raise him up quickly. And he might. 
But your job is to stir enough of the fear of God that he's going to be compelled to turn the other way. The Holy Spirit's job is not just in the church right now. But the Holy Spirit is working in the world to convict people of sin. And too often we're concerned with physical body rather than spiritual, or physical sickness rather than spiritual sickness. We've got to get back to looking at things from God's point of view. In your mind and in your heart, you can be saying, thank you, Jesus, that you have laid this person out on their back. Oh, just pray for him that he's able to get up. No, I pray that God keeps him there, honestly, until he is convicted enough of his sin to say, I changed my mind about God and about me. That's how I pray. I pray for family members right now. Lord, do whatever it takes. Amen. Put them Amen. on their back, Lord. Put them on their back. Amen. So they might pause and look up. Okay? Man, God struck Nebuchadnezzar with insanity and allowed him to crawl around on all fours like a beast. He sent insanity upon a man. You know why? That was his mercy. Nebuchadnezzar deserved judgment. Nebuchadnezzar deserved to just be knocked out of the earth, period. God didn't do it that way. God said, no, I'll put you, I'll put you on all fours for seven years until you're able to see some things differently. Thank you, Jesus, for his mercy. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Will you touch on, last night you said that God won't take away our ability to pray. Well, I was teaching on that last night, and uh, it's, uh, you know, medically speaking, apparently, even in insanity, consciousness and ability to pray is not taken away. And isn't that just so beautiful? Mm -hmm. You don't ever have, there's always hope while you're still breathing as a human being on this earth. To the very last breath, God will strive with a person. Isn't that incredible? We deserve judgment. We deserve hell. That's what we deserve. Nebuchadnezzar was a dictator. He was a tyrant. He was a terrible, terrible, terrible man. He mutilated a wonderful man, a holy man named Daniel. He um, castrated that man as a young, young man. And Daniel was a holy man of God, along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But God cared enough about Nebuchadnezzar, that tyrant, to go after him for years. And for over 30 years, he struggled with that man until finally he sent insanity on the man. And that man, at the end of seven years, looked up. And you know what? He changed his mind. That was God's mercy. Did Nebuchadnezzar deserve the judgment that he got? Yeah, he deserved even more than that. But God did it in his mercy. Listen, we live in tension as Christians. We have a new Holy Spirit inside us. We've got old outsides hanging on us. we got a dead body hanging on our new insides. That creates tension. We want to do what's right. We do what is wrong often. There's this tension that only a believer has. But guess what? The Lord lives the same way right now. He is a just God. First, he is just. And he will put forth his justice. He must judge, otherwise he wouldn't be a good God. But he longs to hear mercy. But he only gives mercy if asked for mercy. And so in his judgment, he warns us that things are coming. He gives you time to repent. He gives you time to look up. What a God we serve. So don't Go rushing into a non-believer and try to take all their pain away. There's too much of that in this mm. prosperity gospel church. We just got to take that pain away. I want you to be happy. No, yeah. it doesn't. I want you to be whole. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray, Lord. Thank you, Holy